you all for coming. We're going over the two-part kits to show you the differences between the one-part uh, cans and the two-part kits. The differences, how you use one product versus another product in what areas. Uh, Jeff Moore is our contact with ICP. Terry Dickinson is the product, product development manager-ish, marketing. No, product support. I product support F and... And Ashley is marketing? Yes. <laughs> I can't do the last name, so I'm just going to go with Ashley. Ashley Terry, yeah. That. So um, they're here to answer any and all questions. Uh, our inventory is in stock now as of yesterday. Um, so we'll try to hit all the high points and we'll move on from there. We're going to try to spray some at the very end as well. So who who was here for the o OCF or this one component training we had, what, four months ago, five months ago? Mm -hmm. um, you weren't. Main difference, so the current product that you have um, in, the, in the 24 and 12 ounce cans are moisture cured products, okay? So it's, it's done for anything smaller than your fist. So it's bead applications, cracks, sealants, things like that. Moisture cured means it needs moisture to actually cure the product. One component foam needs that. So if you put a big glob on a table or on a, wherever it is, the outer shell is going to cure, and it can't get moisture to the inside, so it won't cure. <clears throat> so it, that's why it's, it's small bead applications, things like that. 24 hours for it to cure, to totally cure out. Fist or smaller, right? <clears throat> Fist or smaller. This now, to round out your program to the two component products. So this is chemically cured, and I can spray a four by four by four Gaylord and just spray it full and in one hour it's done. It's inert gassing, I mean it's cured 100%. Any issues with heat buildup? There can be. I mean I don't recommend that. I've sprayed it before <coughs> and you hear about, they call it flashover, um, but I've sprayed a lot of foam into things like that just trying to get empty weights and all kinds of stuff. And I've never had it happen. So the main part to that is when you hear about flashover or flash point on foams, it's usually high pressure foams. So this is low pressure. <clears throat> high pressure is different because you're spraying at 1,500 to 2,000 PSI, and it's heated to 140 or 150 degrees before the chemical temperature. So the the reaction temperature is a lot higher. That's where the, the problem is. So you've never had a... I've never had a flashover. Have you ever seen one? Ever? Maybe once or twice where they just continually sprayed and then it started smoking and... <coughs> 300 PSI, right? These are... No, no 192. Yeah, yeah the, they're rated to 300. <clears throat> so this is called SPF, or low pressure spray polyurethane foam. Low pressure, under 200 PSI is where that usually comes into effect, 250 or under, actually. Um, but it's called low pressure spray polyurethane foam. These are your kits, these are the new product just delivered yesterday to the warehouse, which is good news. The PPE proper protect or personal protection for this product is different to the OCFs. The OCFs, you had the glasses, you had the coverage, you had the, the, the uh, gloves. Now we're adding in a respirator for this two component product. So if you look at this, it's a half mask with a, it's a 3M mask, half mask with uh, organic vapor uh, cartridges on it, that's 6,000 I think is what they are. So that's recommended, and then proper ventilation is huge, so. <clears throat> Storing the product 70 to 85 degrees is where we wanna keep the chemical. It can go colder, it can go a little bit hotter, but in order to spray the product, the, the range is 70 to 85 degrees, that's where we want that's where you're going to get your best yield, the best product, all of that emptying, 
you know, ratios and stuff. The kits, shaking them one to two minutes when you first get the kits, and then if, if there's extra and you start again tomorrow, we want you to shake it again for one to two minutes. And that's, we'll show you outside when we go outside to spray, but I mean, just a back and forth shaking for one to two minutes just to agitate the product that's inside it. Primarily used for filling large voids. So when you look at the OCF or one component products, it's in the smaller cans versus this. In, in, if you're in your basement and your rim joist with the gun foam or something, you're just spraying a bead around the perimeter of the product. And then you're taking a fiberglass or a rigid foam board or something and sticking it in there for the insulation value. This now does both. So your air sealing and your insulate. Expands three to five times the dispense unit. So if you want two inches, you're spraying out a half to three quarters of an inch for it to expand out. And here's to most building materials. There's a plastics are the biggest thing when it comes to it won't stick. It'll spray on and it'll stay there, but you can peel it right off. So plastic, this queen, that type of stuff, it's gonna, if it has some kind of webbing to it, tie back, things like that, it'll stick to it. So. Uh, as I said earlier, the two component foam is chemically cured and then mechanically removing cured foam. So you have to, if you get it on something, concrete or something like that, you want it to let it cure and then scrape it off is, is the best way to do it. Because if you go in and you try to wipe it off with nothing, you're just smudging it and making it a bigger mess usually. So. So the kit sizes. So you guys have 100, 200, and 600 board foot kits. <clears throat> That's the way the market is, is determines the size of these things. So a board foot is a square foot, an inch thick. Pretty simple. So if you if you're have a customer that wants, they have, let's say, 300 square feet, they tell you. The next question is, how thick do you want it to be? If it's one inch thick, then that's 300 board feet. If they want to go two inches thick, then 600 board feet. Three, 900. So that's the key is square footage, but the inches of how, of how thick it's going to be. So the number on here is related to the <coughs> board feet that it will cover. That it will cover. So 200 board feet, 600, 600 board feet. and 100. Yeah. And that's pretty much the standard in the uh, industry is how they know the nomenclature. It is. Right? You know, they're, they fluctuate up a little bit, but again, the one, two, and six are is theoretical yield. Um, our kits empty 95-ish percent, so um, because there's a dip tube in them, so it, it's actually you know there's a little bit in the bottom of the chemical of the tanks so that's not going to be gone, but um, it's. A, it's a consistent number if the temperature is right now if it's cold or hot the chemical or the substrates that that calculation is going to go down because it's not going to expand as much or it's going to expand too quick if it's hot and you're going to lose your yield on it so so when you get to the very bottom of your puppy once it starts splattering is that what you're going to see now the fine of mist but those the sputtering up? yeah okay. and usually one or the other is going to kick first i mean it just depends uh, but there's the weights are a little bit different in the cans based on the viscosity of the chemical so that they're in theory should empty out right with each other but one usually will go before the other and you'll see it in the hose before it, that's why the air bubbles are yeah here. you'll so start, start seeing, seeing bubbles a bunch of air bubbles so those should be laid things. flat <clears throat> because it's got a dip tube they should be upright upright not on an angle or right. on a flat surface. If they're laying down at the beginning, they'll spray. But once you get through the part of the product, you'll start getting air purges into it, and it, it won't be it won't be good. So. And when you're done, just open them up all the way, and then spray out or release, and then yes. pitch them. Yep. So the tanks are empty. One tank's empty. So you can either into a bag or something. 
or box or bag, we, we recommend a trash bag. You can pull the trigger just to empty out the rest of the chemical on the other side or whichever side's not empty. And then you can take the hose off and open the valves just to relieve all pressure in the tanks and they can go in a dumpster, they can go in whatever. So, so when you open the valve, it releases the pressure <coughs> from the top of the tank, not from the bottom. So it's not gonna spray material out or? No, it can't. Okay. That, so the dip tube's in there. So it's sucking off the bottom. Okay. Now, if you lay it flat then, yeah, you're not gonna get chemical out. But in Best theory- practice is to invert the cylinders. And then, mm -hmm. and then as you open them in that box. And there'll be a little bit because there'll still be a little bit in the dip tube but that'll go away pretty quick. But relieve the pressure and then they can just get thrown out. So is this, this is good with everybody? That's, this is usually, especially in customer care, if you get somebody calling in, I'm not getting the yield that I thought I was gonna get. And then it, once you talk them through it and you understand what a board foot is, they're up. Oh, so I had a contractor um, that I trained, this was six years ago. He came back to me, he said, Jeff, I'm not getting the job. I'm losing money on every job I'm bidding. I said, so I talked him through it after about a half hour. He was bidding the square footage and spraying three inches thick. <laughs> so he was considering that. So he was actually losing two thirds of his money every time he did a job. So once he figured that out, and even though we went through it in, in the training, it didn't register. So for a while, he was losing money. After that, he was pretty happy. So one cubic foot is actually 12 board feet. Yes. So one of the neat parts to these kits is we call it the color-wise nozzle. Terry's going to demonstrate it. And once, once you see it, then I'll talk about it a little bit. So this is a, this is pretty cool. Basically, you want your chemical, like it was said previously, the 75 to 85. This is a sure indicator as your contractor grabs his kit and starts to spray if that chemical is where it needs to be. As you can see, that was cold water. What temperature does that go blue? 60. There you go. And then once they warm their chemical up and start spraying, it goes back to clear. Terry, how many other companies have a blue nozzle like that? Nobody. Nobody but our Nobody. No, just ICPS. So what's that do for our contract? Peace of mind, he's not going to apply the product incorrectly, right? <clears throat> you can ask him if he's caught up complaining he's not getting enough yield. All right, what temperature are you doing at? Oh, I'm going at 65 oh, degrees. Are you sure? Is your nozzle blue? Well, yeah, it's blue. No, you're, you're bloody too low. And you know, every time you get a call in, tech or customer service, <laughs> whatever, I'm, I'm following all the instructions, everything's right. And this is a, like Dave just said, this is a way if, if ask him what color the, the nozzle is. So when this first came out for us four or five years ago, from the sales side of the business, <laughs> we thought it was a gimmick. We thought it was a marketing gimmick. And you know, it was like, oh, okay. And it went through the first year and through the first winter of where usually with foams, that's when you get most of your technical calls or problem calls on customer service or the tech side. It cut it down 60, I think 60 or 65% of the phone calls were reduced because of this. So that tells you that most of the calls are temperature related. This really takes care of that, so. So what kind of yield differences do you see, let's say if somebody's <clears throat> spraying, because around here they'll probably end up with some 40 degree weather would be my assumption. What would, what would be the differential in terms of yield? Ambient temperature I'm not concerned about. It's chemical temperature. So that's 70 to 85 degrees is the actual chemical itself. Right. You can spray down to 40 degrees on substrates. We, we, will, we will tell you, we'll tell you you can go down to 40 degrees. Once you get below that, you start introducing things, moisture, frost, things like that, which the foam's not gonna stick to. 
thing. But now, if they, quote, have warmed it up, but it's really 40 degrees, the chemicals are 40 degrees, what kind of yield are? They're, at they 40 expect? degrees, you're not gonna get, it's gonna be, they 50%. will not know. It won't even be that. Really? It may not even cure, because the viscosity degrees. between the A side and B side are very different. So yeah, as you get colder, the B side is going to get a lot thicker than the A side, and you're going to have an extremely off ratio foam. It'll be probably really soft foam. Yeah. If it's too cold. That's why we set it at 60. When when our our R and D and our tests and our chemists and say, once you get below 60, we really don't want you spraying the product. So. It will spray, but again, you're going to get, it's going to be off ratio and the yield is going to be way, 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 way down. So, so does the nozzle measure, measure the air temperature or the temperature? Chemical. The okay, so. They'll be cold. If it's 28 degrees outside and this is in the back of the truck, the, the, the tips will be blue. And that's the best time because once you put it on the gun and you pull the trigger and the chemical goes through it, it should change it to clear. Okay. That's, that's the key. And it's, it's pretty quick. You saw how quick it changed. So they can pull the trigger for five or six seconds and know that it's if it's not changing, there's an issue. <clears throat> but this is a huge thing. You also have the green guard on these like you do on the, the OCF, the, the one component products. So that's another plus. But this color wise will cut down your technical calls, problem calls considerably. The handy gun, I'm not going to pull that trigger, but because we already have a chemical in that one we sprayed earlier. So this is the handy gun. This is the bread and butter of the product. So there's a safety on the handle so that you can't pull, right? Um, it's a variable pressure gun. So as you pull, the more you pull, the more chemical comes out. We want it sprayed at like half to three quarter trigger. I think one of the things you need to emphasize, Dave, I forgot to mention this. The competition that you'll come up against with this gun is full trigger pull. So there's Convenience, Dow, and, and RHH, which are the, the other three um, products. With their gun, they're pulling full trigger. So when you uh, convert the Dow or Convenience guys, this is important for you too. Um, they have to be told half to three quarter trigger. Because if they go out and they spray this the first time and pull full trigger, it's gonna be twice the volume coming out as the kits that they're used to. So, so this when you is say about full trigger, does that mean that it's just they're on or off or there's Yeah. Okay. I mean they can vary it a little bit, but <laughs> they recommend full trigger pull on their guns. But their full trigger pulls is very low output. It's about half to three quarter of what our trigger. Our full trigger pull, it's going to bounce off the wall. So, I mean, some people like that if they're doing, a, you know. One of the things I say with the, with the full trigger, if I'm in an attic doing air sealing in an attic, and I'm on my stomach and it's a 312 pitch roof and I can't quite get out to the end. To that soffit line this the, with a full trigger and the cone nozzle i can shoot four or five feet with no problem it's not going to look the greatest but i know it's going to get out there and it's going to be good fall so full trigger in a situation like that um, is, is what we recommend and then also as you lower get emptying the kit you're going to start pull full trigger because it's a it's a finite amount of pressure in these tanks so at the end you're going to be pulling full trigger but this is definitely a, uh, a differentiator, I guess. That word was used earlier and I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't respond to that one, but differentiator between the two, the guns. Um, do you have a tip? I'll show you. Um, Where in the process when someone is buying this, are they made aware of that? <clears throat> the difference, the it, 
Well, it depends on where it's going into. It's your distributor, it's your um, your rep, your manufacturer reps, your salespeople. That's going to be the key. So I can't just walk into a Home Depot and buy this off the shelf, is it? Um, you can buy the uh, froth pack, the Dow product, off the shelf there. And they ain't cheap dates. They're expensive at retail. What's the lead time on this product? 15 like days. 15 days. Same Just as like the, cans. the cans. So the, the nozzle, and we'll show you outside too, but there's a, a, a clip on the end. So that goes in first, and then you hear it click, so you know it's engaged then. So it's pretty simple. And there's two, there's a, this is the fan tip, so it's a coating spray, which if you look back there on the floor, that was one pass of a fan tip. The cone, which is more of a directional spray, is a, uh, you get more volume out of it, so. Each box comes with one of each? Yeah, so this has a nine and a half foot, these two. And it has the A and B in each box, right? So it's one box to sell. Already attached. Already attached. And that's going to stay, right? That we yes. Okay. This, two boxes, 15-foot hose, unattached because it's in two boxes. So it, it'll always come in the A side box. Uh, and I understand that from this morning's that there's internally for you guys, there's two part numbers for this. The customer will order one part number and the computer will tell you you have to order an A and a B part number for it to, to match up. They're on the pallets, uh, a layer of A and a layer of B, so there's nine of these kits, nine A's and nine B's per pallet. So when they go to pick an order, they're picking two boxes, one on top of each other, an A and a B. These have 26 per pallet, the smaller kits. Explain to them why if they have an A and they don't have a B, how we can't replace the B. So one of the things that will happen, you'll get calls in customer care, customer service. I have an A, I don't know what happened to the B. Not good. So you're gonna be selling A's and B's. That's the only way you're gonna sell. If if they let's say it's a shipment that just went out and they received something and they say, oh, I didn't get my B, that's one, that's one thing. That's, there's something that was messed up either in shipping or picking or wherever the case may be. Um, but if the bigger concern is six, seven months down the road when a contractor has misplaced or it'll hook up one tank to an older tank and things go, once you get a, these are a 12 month shelf life, so if you have a brand new tank and a tank that's eight, nine months old, there's pressure decay and there's, there's viscosity differences. So when we produce these on the line, these things are set to a plus or minus uh, pressure and they're, that's how they're run. So in each order, there's a, a limit to them. So let's say they get one that's a brand new kit and it's on the upper side of the pressure limits for the, the fills. And they have a kit that's nine months old that was on the lower side of the pressure and now it's even reduced more because of age. It's gonna be off ratio foam. So we do not want you to sell just an A or a B. We want them buying A's and B's. We know your warehouse is shipping out first, first in, first out processing. So we know it's the newest product is, is getting put in and the old stuff's shipping out. So um, we just want to make sure that you only sell an A and a B at the same time. So the A and B, if we look at manufacture date, they have to be within a couple weeks of each other? Is that? They'll be in the same lot number. They'll be made at the same time. They, they, will have, the, they should have the same lot number. They yes. will have the same lot number. When they come to you, they're made on the exact same day. They're made, they're made on one line and the other, A's and B's are going down at the same time. And we will not break that pair here. 
he has an A, and then a B, sure, we'll sell you another set of A and Bs. Otherwise, our inventory is going to go stupid. So we always sell pairs. And we Sorry can't for, order just Bs. No. We have to order have to A's and Bs from them. So. You have one part number, right, in the system? That is for an A and a B, no negotiation. This is Sorry for your luck, but the, we, we sell them in pairs because they're matched, they're produced in pairs, and that's how we sell them out in pairs. So that smaller box there, for example, that's an A and a B? No, no, no. This this is, so that's just that's that self no. on self. So. This is A and B. Right. That does a 100 board feet. The second one does 200 board feet. They're all loosely <coughs> fit, and the, that's not the size they are. The 600 is two because they're so big. You have to have them separate because this, okay. <coughs> the volume is so large. If we could have it in one, we would, but it's just not possible to put that much stuff in one container. Too heavy, too. All right. And you'll notice um, we don't have an A and a B here, but this is where your A and your B will be located on the sticker. You just happen to not have them on this first load. They're going to correct that. Get a some sticker sit down and put an A and a B on this. Um, but this is 600 board feet or 200 board feet or 100 board feet. And it's based on the size of his job. So the warehouse will be checking out the first? The warehouse will be checking out the first to make sure that Yes. And then you'll notice on these uh, as well, on the stickers, it has a born on date and an expiration date right on it. And the UPC and all that. We don't, we don't normally do the expiration date, but time sensitive. And what no one's asked yet is 12 months in a day, does it go bad? No, but your yields will start going lower and lower. But they don't go, you know, if it sprays and you have a good pattern, go ahead and use it. It's not like it's going to crap out, right? It'll sputter and, lo and look terrible when it's not optimizing anymore, right? Yeah. Well, so if it's spraying, okay, you're fine. Will the A or B age and viscosity differently? So as they get older, will one, I mean, will your mix ratio go off? It shouldn't. It shouldn't. If I mean, if you go past the 12 months, that's when the decay starts happening. Okay. So, I mean, and Terry and I have both sprayed kits two, yeah. two years old and, and they're still fine. And they're still, and they're fine. still fine. We just guarantee it for one year. If we know you'll get here. optimal right. performance. That one from over here, another one from over here, that, that's totally, and you'll ask him, what's the date of manufacture? What's the date of that A, what's the date of that B? And if it's once from January, once from July, Sorry, it's just you can't guarantee that, that that spray ratio. Right. We just this is kind of a um, uh, what's the word uh, more sensitive product than normal our normal products. We just just stick to our guns, and if he lost a B, I'm sorry, so we always sell him a pair. So it's just that's how we do it. All the other competitors are going to be doing the same thing. Yeah, pretty much. My assumption. No. Unless they don't care about their spray yeah. ratios, yeah. but then. Well, most, there's only four manufacturers per se that make these, so everyone's in the same same kit. What was the other one? Demon style. What was the other one? RHH. RHH. Versa is the uh, Versa foam. Versa foam is the their name brand. So each each kit, so one box, one box, and two, comes with a gun hose assembly, and it comes with a nozzle pack. So there's, it's eight nozzles in here. There's three cone and five. Five cone and three. Five cone and three fans. Um, and, a, and a pack of petroleum jelly. So the petroleum jelly goes on the face of the, of the uh, there's a little pack. You just put it on there, spread it around. It's not going to affect the, the product in any way, shape, or form. The main reason for it is to keep foam from building up on the face of the gun. So. Any kind of jelly or not, yeah. petroleum, petroleum, any type of petroleum jelly. Petroleum jelly. And the, <laughs> six, kind of jelly. the 600 kit in the nozzle pack Probably. also contains a wrench because those hoses are not reattached. So you have everything in here to spray. I mean, it's it's a self-contained kit other than the PPE, right? So. There's an instructions book in there yep. too, isn't there? The whole pamphlet. Uh, your SDS is in there, your installation instructions are in there. Uh, it's all inclusive. Yeah. Now, what we, from this morning, Emory, what we might need to do is inventory these. 
separate nozzle packs. And the cable. Not, not, not hundreds of them, but just, you know, we do nozzles for our, our cup guns. Somebody's going to say, I ran out of nozzles, can you send me some? Versus having to call them every time and have it shipped out from up there. We'll just have you know, a couple dozen here. I can put them in my office. We don't have to have a part number for them. But we have to have them somewhere where we can get a UPS and shoot it off somebody. Um, so I don't know how it'll do you'll, that for you. And you'll have distributors that will want to buy some. I, I, I'll guarantee you. Not the hoses, but the nozzles? Both. Oh, oh OK. Because when somebody's using these kits, they're, <laughs> they're on the job. They're, they don't want to wait three or four days for UPS to bring something. So a distributor having, a, you know, 25 of these on hand and a gun hose or two is a, is a huge customer service part of it. So we need to put part numbers and put them in stock and sell them? I would. Okay. Now, here's a question I didn't have from this morning. Can I take your, your uh, hoses and your blue little thingy and stick it on a Versa can and shoot it? And Look well, about blue there too. If the threading is the same and they hook up, yeah. If they're cold, yeah. It's it's purely temperature sensitive. Your gun. But our nozzles will not fit their gun hose assembly. No, no, no okay. he's taking he's talking about taking our whole gun hose assembly and putting it on. Somebody else. And put it Stick it on, on RHH apple. It's just the thread pattern, right? And all I don't know if it's the same. Scenes, yeah. I don't know if they're all the same or not. I I can't answer that. It probably are. There's so yes, you could. They're all they're all nine sixteenths thread. Ours are. So yes, you could take the gun and put it on a okay. competitor's kit. Because somebody else might like the idea of keeping it, dumbing it down, so the guys know that turns blue stop from spraying. It's a good idea. How many people have that? Just us and and, and ICP. All right, so that's a big deal. It's um, that was very hard for them to give that up. And let us have that so uh, we appreciate that opportunity because it will help us have less phone calls in the tech service we we're saying yeah to turn blue should be a first question if they have a splattering problem that's the first line of defense is to turn blue to heat up your your cans not by sticking in front of a uh, torpedo heater that's not what you want to do with this stuff either it's ambient put it, uh, take it home put it in your hot box or something and heat it up yeah, you'll get guys that want to stick it in front of a torpedo. Oh, uh, it's got to get warmed up quick because I got to get the job done. But flame is not good, so it, it can scorch the chemical itself, but it can heat things up way, 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 way too quick. So, if if the containers are cold, your recommendation for a long time to warm the container. I mean, we say if they're if they're in a warm temperature setting, 70 degrees, 24 hours, they they'll be fine. If they want to cook it, you got to put it in a hot box and cook it kindly, not with a blowtorch. Yeah, so you know, a small little ceramic heater in in an enclosed area of some type, um, turn it on. They, those ceramic heaters usually have a thermostat, turn it to 80, 85, so it'll regulate itself, and. I, and the smaller kits, within an hour, you could probably spray. The bigger kits, doing it that that way with a concentrated heat source, non-flame. <laughs> um, I'd say two hours on the on the bigger kits, and you'll you'll be able to spray. You'll get it to where the the nozzle will turn clear. So you'll know if it didn't heat up because it wasn't the right spray pattern, right? right. So if you, if you come out with droplets, that's not good. You extend and the nozzle. And one thing I will say that if you look at this, and I'll pass this pack around, um, the cone nozzle, the mixing element is a dark blue. So you saw this. This has a clear mixing element in it. So this, it's the outer surface that's turning blue. So when they, when they heat up the, the actual cone nozzle, it is blue inside, so it, it's just remember it's the outer surface, so you can see that it's blue. So if the product is um, frozen in transit, but then goes back to normal temperature, does that affect the pressure? This stuff, it has a free, I mean, it's free sprawl, thrall. Stable. Stable. So, easy for you to say. 
I don't know if we know it a number of times, but I mean, you need to, if it freezes, which I don't know if we've ever had an instant where it, I don't know that it technically can freeze because the boiling agent is a freon. So it's not going to. It can get really, really cold, but it just needs to be brought to temperature and, and you're fine. I mean, you're still shaking for the one to two minutes and mixing everything back up again. Free on a, one that's going to be regulated. We had a, you had yes. a, a number, right? So this is 134A that's in the product now. 2020 is the SNAP ruling for the GBA formulas. Um, we're using a, uh, we partnered with Honeywell and their GBA blowing agent to, I mean, this has been a big deal because we have to reformulate basically everything from scratch because the blowing agents are so different um, and they don't like to mix with certain parts that are in our current products. But we're so far ahead of the game right now, we're, we're in good shape. So we've already we introduced- We pretty much have a formula. It's right. just a matter of- uh, We've introduced two specialty products with the new global, global warm, uh, warming GBA in it. So. And this product is VOC compliant in all 50 states, so we don't have to worry about what we can and can't sell currently. But it cannot go out by air. Never, ever, ever, ever. And if it goes out by ocean, do you see any ocean shipments? Um, yeah, international will potentially go. Or even Hawaii. Hawaii. Or Hawaii or Alaska. Yeah. So, yeah. Not that we do a whole bunch in one of those states, um, but potential's there. If it goes air or ocean, no air. No air. But if it goes ocean, the hoses need to be detached. Okay. So I don't know if you're just gonna sell the 600 kit. Yeah, <laughs> then you're fine. And that's a GHS? That's the UN 3500. Once you start spraying, um, the, the tip, it's mixing inside of this. So A and B is coming out of the hose, going into this nozzle, and it's actually mixing with this element inside. So by the time it comes out of the end of the tip, it's, a, it's a, what we call a froth. It's actual foam being produced. So once you stop spraying, this stuff is, is um, tack free in 30 to 60 seconds, so it starts setting up. So if you stop spraying for 30 seconds or more, you have to put a new tip on. Because it'll start curing inside here because it's all mixed, all right? So you will actually have hardened foam in this nozzle once you start spraying. And again, most most of your sales are going to be to customers that have already used this product one sh way, shape, or form. They'll have some new ones, but um, the clientele that's going to be buying this is going to be professional. Aware. So. so this is E84, class one product. This chart will show, so you have 100, this is your part numbers, 100, 200, this is a combined 600, it's not 600 each. Um, R value is a six, it's an aged R value, which is what industry standards are, that's, that's how everything is rated by aged R value of six per inch. The density is 1.75 pound. Actually, when you spray it out, it's probably closer to two most of the time. Um, tag free in 30 to 6, you can cut it in 2 to 5 and fully cured in 1 hour. So this is a fire rate. Well, that's the E84. E the ASTM, ASTM E84. Okay. So it does have a 20 minute flame, at, uh, right. or 4400 on the side. But that's at 2 inches then. Correct. Don't negotiate on 12 months, man. Sorry. 
Go backwards. What was that EA for? 20 on the uh, flame and 400 on the smoke. 450 is the, the limit, right? Mm -hmm. And Abby has these slides if you guys want these. They're, they're all sent to everybody, this PowerPoint we sent along with the Dropbox on the video if you uh, listen to the morning or most of that will be on the website, right? Yes, somehow some way to get marketing to that. So applications, I mean there's I I told the group earlier there's it goes from residential air sealing to I we have a, a customer in Myrtle Beach that does um, haunted house displays for Disney, Six Flags, whatever, big, huge, the big ones. And they use our products to spray and sculpture on these things because it's a rigid product once it's cured. And they paint them and shave them and sand them. And, and it's, so it's a wide variety of things that can be used for this stuff. We even have some guys that'll do taxidermy with them. They've done, uh, like uh, arrow, they'll take big trash bags and for targets for bow and arrow. You know, it's just multiple things. So residential, commercial, OEM, and then others. Now, some of these are based on our. We have a, a refillable system, which is a bigger volume chemical. So, like trench breakers in uh, pipeline industry, you're not going to use kits to do that, but. Just give you a feel for what it is. Most of your stuff's going to be residential, I would think. But like construction, yeah. <laughs> you guys were talking about the fire rating. Is there a one hour? Everyone's calling about one hour fire rating test when they're building walls. Is there yeah. anything like this on there? Yeah, I know that would be a wall system. So this E84 is the exact same thing as our acoustical sealant. It's also yeah. tested. Uh, the or ULS and the E84 is the same test. That's a smoke and flame spread test done in a, uh, a wind tunnel. And so that, that's just the stuff itself, and not a wall. No, no, one something. hour and two hour, that's, you have to build an entire wall made of this, 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 and we don't have this. Yeah. So, so nice. one thing to that, though, is, and we haven't talked about this because depending on what market you go into, there is a product called DC315, which is a, um, it creates a, uh, the thermal um, rating on it. So it's a 15 minute rating, I think, versus a four point, the E84 is like four point, something minutes. The thermal barrier, which is a DC 315, which some people might require, um, there's a, it would be an additional yearly licensing thing to it, but DC 315 is tested on our branded stuff, that it's a coating that can go on for basement walls, crawl spaces, things like that. So that's a, that's a next level conversation. Yes. Can you talk a little bit about spill response? Say something gets punctured. Can you talk to that? Kitty litter is the best. Just any sort of absorbent. Um, now, if they mix together, it'll make not a very nice foam, but it will make a foam. But if you just have a spill, the best thing to do is get some sort of absorbent. Okay. So it, what's the, is it, uh, what, what's the viscosity of the material inside? If I just were to puncture, say, the A or the B side, is that? Well, With, because it's under pressure. I know, it's going to release. It's going to release pretty quickly. Sure. And go. And then what's the viscosity? Is it going to solidify? Is it going to remain liquid? Is It'll it's remain going to remain liquid. liquid. Okay. Unless they mix. So okay, so yeah, the situation I'm thinking of is um, I don't know. A, a box falls off of a pallet from a high point and it hits the ground and it, and it ruptures. So the immediate, you know, what's going to happen immediately is it's going to you'll you'll see and hear probably the release of that that uh, you know pressurized material. Yep. So at that point, you're basically standing back, right? You're just letting it exhaust the pressure. Yes. Um, okay. Otherwise, you're gonna get 
really, really messed up that stuff all over you. Well, and those are things we need to be prepared for. Use the flexi stuff and put it over top of it. Um, so yeah, just looking at what to do, how do we train our people, do we, you know, uh, in the event of a spill or a rupture, you know. And the SDSs are... And that's included in there too as far as cleanup that if you do have a spill, how to handle it. Okay. What else? Any other questions? You guys want to see it sprayed? Yes. Yeah. Got it. Go outside. Expiration. On the box. Uh, on the cylinder. It's the manufacturer. Now, okay. you say expiration date. You're putting it on there. So the day after it's dead. Are we changing that to manufacturer date? No, they wanted both manufacturer and expert and used before on the box. It's manufacturer on the that way it's at least not going to hit the wall. And then we have the respirator, which I'm not going to put on right now or you won't be able to hear me talk. Nice. But to set up the kit, this is coiled in the front. So you basically just pull this flap down, your gun hose assembly, and your nozzle pack are right there. Inside the nozzle pack, as Jeff explained, is a packet of petroleum jelly. The first thing you want to do is coat the face of this gun. It's not going to affect the product in any way, shape, or form. Jeff, you already shook it, right? I did. Okay. And you turn on the valves. Safety's on. And you see that the chemical has come into the hoses, and as Jeff explained, you're always going to have this because of the, the air pressure in there that it's not going to fill. We have two styles of nozzles. This is a cone nozzle. If you guys just want to pass it around, it's more conical for a straight, and this is the fan nozzle. We do the conical thing for demo Yes. Good. So, like I said in the thing, when you first first pull the trigger now, you're just gonna get air. We're not filming this part. Yes, we are. <laughs> you hear the, the audio, the click? The clip. Yep. Remove the safety. It's always best to, if you have a scrap bag or a box to release that air. Wow. 
wider. Like, you're not looking as much of a fill, you're just trying to seal up the dirt. Oh, okay. It like just prevents that air from coming through. Where that's an actual like, high artifact. <laughs> I don't know if everybody can see that. So, see, 